We're back on the field at the 59th Porsche Parade, and we always say Porsche Parade is about family. And uh, we've heard of this story about twins on the field, and I have to say, uh, it was pretty intriguing. I had to seek them out. After 60 years, I believe, 60 years, these twins have been apart. I'm not talking about these gentlemen, but I'm actually talking about these two 54 speedsters, number 13 and 14, who have come together for the first time here at the Monterey Porsche Parade. So, Bruce Angari, I'd yes. like you tell me a little bit about the story of these two twins. Uh, I will, I'm glad to. So, uh, yeah, 80013 was uh, produced October 8th, 1954, and uh, I believe Vince's car, 80014, was produced uh, October, October 10th. 10th. October, and 10th. Yeah. October 10th. And they're both on the same shipment, the Max Hoffman, who was the only dealership for Porsche in the United States, had one in New York and one in California. And so they're both on that shipment. To, they were uh, two of the seven red cars on the board, and uh, they had two white ones and the only silver one in 54. So naturally when people hear of twins, they say, okay, so how can you tell the difference? I know I immediately noticed this uh, very unique Speedster badge. I, you know, I've seen the one that's on your car before, but I've never seen this one, and they're both correct. Are there more differences between the car now or actually when they came overseas, do you know? Well, Bruce's car is a 1500 normal. All the Speedsters were 1500s, displaced 1500 cc's. Um, and mine, number 14, is the first Super. And there was, I think there was 10 or 12 Supers in 1954 of the 200. So Supers are kind of, you know, more unusual. But, and, but you really wouldn't know that until you lifted the hood to see that, right? Could you tell just from outwardly? script in the back that shows okay. that. That's number one. Number two, the Cardex, right. you know, which is the original right. index card showing what comes with the car. And I don't know about your Cardex, but mine hardly has anything on it. Right. I recognized early on that it was um, not only a, a speedster was a cool thing, and there's all kinds of oddities on the things. These things have a blunt hood handle instead of a pointy hood handle. Different dash emblem was actually, you can see what the machining marks right. on instead of the investment cast one. Right that came later, the stylized Speedster script, uh, the top that doesn't buckle, it's pulled down much in the yeah, same way that a, a horse a harness yeah. on a saddle yeah. is done. Wow. And, and, it, and it, it was a nice idea, but a bad idea, because what would happen is those straps would come loose, air would get under there, um, it'd speed, yeah. and the top would fly off. Instant the parachute. <laughs> That's right. All right. So like the 30th car, I think they said, we've got to change something here, Franz and Hans, and yeah, so yeah. They, they built They're uh, R&D, R&D. <laughs> One of the most unusual things is these cars started out as cabriolet bodies, yeah. and they actually cut the top, uh, the, the windshield frame off because it's all one-piece steel, and they cut that off and built by hand the, the windshield, uh, removable windshields for it, and, and built two-piece dashes for them, so labor-intensive. Well, uh, yeah. To this day, the uh, difference between a, cab a cabriolet and a speedster early on was the vent, uh, little vent pull right. up in the, up by the passenger's knee and the dri passenger's right knee and the driver's left knee, and those are um, bolted shut on these right. things. Right. So they exist. There's no ventilation. Yeah, there's but no, no ventilation. No ventilation. But that's, that's uh, the, just the way they did it because they were starting with cabriolet bodies on these first handful. Did you know of each other, or did the cars have some sort of relationship, and and why did they finally come together now? Mine was into Hoffman's, just just like Bruce's, so they were together there, and I know mine went to Tennessee. I don't know where Bruce's yeah, went. Mine, if you mine know. stayed in Maryland for quite a few years, and uh, wound up going to Florida and Texas, and uh, I was in contact with uh, Brian Moore, who is uh, he was the owner of the number 13 for 26 years. You know, uh, in the early 90s in the Bay Area, in the San Francisco Chronicle, this car was for sale. I had owned this one at the time. I went and looked at it. I thought about it. I passed on it. I thought, God, it'd be cool to have the I'll both of them. He passed on it. <laughs> that was 20-something years ago. But anyhow, um, and then I knew that Bruce ended up with it about five or, I don't know how yeah, many years, years ago. I okay, nine, nine years ago. But I know he's had it for a while. and. And I'd heard different things about the restoration, and I saw it at the Rensport reunion right. uh, three years ago. Right. Okay, right. three yeah, years ago. Race car classic, yeah. yeah, yeah, it was yeah. kind of neat, and I saw the car and said hi to Bruce and stuff like that, and it was still ever so slowly trudging away with mine. Mm -hmm. And today is the first day in 25 years that this car's been on the road. 
Wow. Fact, probably 45 because I've, I've had it for 25 and it was a part and a rolling chassis for 20 years before I got it. Yeah. Well, thank you to the, to the both of you for bringing them together. Uh, they are beautiful in their own right and spectacular, but the fact that you have the story behind it that brings them together, that's really special. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And there you go, another special story here at the Porsche Parade.